Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is how you learn to draw and how you learn to see to draw. If you haven't figured this out yet, I like to think of drawing as three different segments of information, right? Hopefully this translates. This is observation, right? Learning to see so that you can then record. Manipulation. Um, not of people, of tools and materials, right? So an artist with 30 years experience is going to do something totally different with that Crayola crayon box than my seven-year-old. And that's about manipulation. So you're going to learn how to work the tools and stuff to get the results that you want. What do you think the last segment is? Yeah, it's okay. Then we can talk about expression, right? which is really where the meat of it is. That's what the artist does. I think anybody can learn these things. Um, the expression is valid and awesome for everybody, um, but you can't really say anything with a visual language until you know how to say it. So that's how I see this, and that's kind of how I structure this class. So yes, we're doing some exercises where you're learning to observe, and you're not making like art that's all about you. Sometimes they get parents come through at walk through around this time of year, and they'll say, oh gosh, I'm so glad Arden is in this class. She really just needs a place where she can relax and blow off steam and express herself. And I'm like, mm hmm yep, that's pretty much not how I approach it, but um, I do hope that you reach this place where you feel like you have the tool and ability to express whatever it is you want to express with your drawing, with your art, okay? So that's how I see this. So back to observation. Uh, I'm drawing it not where I want it. And I got my board so clean and I love it. So, 
We're going to talk about four different ways that your brain that knows so much, your intellect, interferes with your ability to observe, which then interferes with your ability to express yourself and blow off your steam and just have a good time in art class, right? Which is often what your parents think we do here, which is lovely and great, but not all of it. All right. When you were little, 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 we're talking like just learning how to use verbal language and visual language. You had a drawing, a drawing that you probably drew a lot, right? And often what we do is we teach little kids to use a vocabulary that describes the world that they live in. And so it's probably gonna be a landscape. And what are you gonna have in your childhood landscape? A tree. A tree. And some grass. Yeah, I mean, we're talking like Clementine age, right? Little, little. Like little house. There are two kind of people in this world. There are slopey trunk tree people. There are popsicle trunk tree people. Obviously, there's more than two types. There are cloud top people. There are circle type people. And maybe you were a slopey circle or a poofy stick. Do you remember? You, do, you don't? No. You do. But you, do you remember it though, yeah. right? What is up with that? Ethan doesn't. He's like, I, don't, I was never a child, ever. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I was born this big. It's true. All right, so we got a tree. No, you recently just started. All right, all right. What else did you say? There's, There's also. Yeah, just coming out of Ethan's height. gonna call me short. Did you have one of these? Yeah. yeah. Right, nobody, no house looks like this, really, does it? Um, but of course the house has to have Oh yeah, this is how my house was. Yours may vary, but mine were like it was like a face. There's two really important elements missing from mine. They might have been in common with yours. The first is a mega humongous doorknob. Why? I don't know. I guess it's because that's how kids know. Like that's what a door does. It has a knob. You get in the house. It's like the only important feature of a house. And then often you'll see one of these. Not that we burn a lot of fires around here. Maybe as you get older, maybe, right? I'm seeing very little recognition. I know you drew this. Oh, that's true. I know. That, that's right. You're right. I'm, I'm looking for it, and you're just like, okay. So you had your house, and you had your tree, and as time went by, you might start to develop it. Does anybody want to come? Do you remember your drawing? Come on. Come on another huge feature so, like like you're on video do I have your consent yes thank you hi future class yeah okay so like 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 as it got better no nope. or during your basic level like the the bare bones skeleton map of your child life You can draw it in the rectangle. That's what I kind of thought you'd do. Oh, you did. Okay, good. Oh, oh, I did. Yeah. You're great. You're great. Really like Ooh, a door. Yeah. I'd fill it in more, but I'm trying to be quick. Yeah. Well, as a little, little kid. Well, I'd always, no, I always would do the grass. Oh, okay. I was a big grass girl. Grass girl. I like it. Okay. Cauliflower tree. Nice. Corner son, you're a corner son. Yeah. Anybody else a corner son? Yeah, but not that corner. Not that corner. I've never but, seen. But the trees over corner. here, I have to balance it out. Yeah. Okay. That, Isn't that yeah. funny? No, and no. when you talk about balancing it out, you probably thank you. You're welcome. And then later, little people and all that stuff, and maybe a dog or whatever. I would do like a little like stripe at the top, like the sky, like just at the top, just up here. Like that would be blue. Yeah. <laughs> my, that Eleanor did it like that. Green down here. Not textural and then blue, just like scribble, scribble. Like Emmeline, when she's um, she's older now, but her hair was always just circle and then like <laughs> that way. Okay, so why are we talking about this though? Obviously, you don't draw like this anymore. Um, but every every it's like a normal part of childhood development. You develop a visual language for your world around you the same way you develop a verbal language, and maybe sometimes your words were off too, right? Sketty and things like that. Sketty. Uh-huh. 
and I think that there's a commonality for the Western world. Not every child in every place in the world is going to have this childhood drawing. But mine was arranged the same way. Tree, house, sun, except my son was here. And I even remember where, when I got older, I started putting the little V-shaped birds, you know? And where did you put your little flowers or whatever? Didn't even draw. All of my sons had smiley faces. Oh, smiling oh. sons, like this? Sure, you were not you? <laughs> They're like that, yeah? Yeah. It's weird how it's so deeply ingrained. I don't know. It's a strange thing. Here we all are sharing it. I'm not psychic. It's just I've never had a student say, I never did any of that. <laughs> really? No, some of it. I'm I'm you just want to be honoring. No, all right. I, I did some of that. Some of it? Yeah. I would just draw the house, two windows, and I was it. All right. I wasn't a very creative minimalist. I was well, not a creative No, I mean, I, I can't say that maybe Ethan is a monster because he never did this. I'm just maybe. saying that. No, OK. All right. So we've got this um, early childhood vocabulary. It does not mean that's what you still do, of course. If I sent you out to draw your house, it would not look like that. I know this. I'm not thinking that you do. But often what happens with the little kids is they start to develop that landscape. You draw it over and over. You might move the tree a little over this way, or that element is a little bigger, and you're getting it just right, you know? Like you're rehearsing this thing and practicing it so that it's just right, which is part of composition. And then over time, it becomes less satisfying because it doesn't look right, does it? No. And so details start getting added. 